Welcome to the dark forest. Jackie and her pals will never bore us. Shameless confessions about our obsession will make us laugh and smile. So let's explore the dark forest and dark down for a Hi, Jackie Cation here. You're listening to The Dork Forest. You know the websites, dorkforest.com, thedorkforest.com, if you like a determiner. JackieCation.com has everything. Both of my podcasts, all of the stand-up stuff, the new album, links to YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, all the things. But so, I think, does dorkforest.com, where you can look at old videos of different shows. Anyway, if you want to support the show, tell people about the show, review it on iTunes, thumbs it up on Pandora or Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. I appreciate that. You can donate. You can donate monthly. PayPal lets you do that. You can also do my Venmo if you like. It's at Jackie Cation absolutely everywhere. And my email address is Jackie at JackieCation.com. And that's what the PayPal is. The PayPal link is on JackieCation.com and DorkForest.com. And go to any of them. Thanks for listening. There's merch, there's stand up, there's tour guide. You know, you can find out where I'm touring. This is getting long. So let's get into the show. Hey, Jackie Cation, I'm in my garage. I'm in my garage, you guys. And it's another great episode of the Dork Forest. But this time it's with Jacob Sager. Is it Sager? It's Sager Weinstein. It's the world's Sager Weinstein. weirdest name to pronounce. Yes. Well, your name is Jacob Weinstein. You better put something in the middle of it. Otherwise, yeah. <laughs> you and like nine guys are going to be fighting over a Twitter handle. So exactly. uh, I have a buddy named Josh Weinstein who had to put Elvis in the middle of his name for, for SAG, for uh, Screen Actors Guild <laughs> or the Writers Guild or some damn thing. So, so <clears throat> Jacob Sager Weinstein is at jacob sw on twitter and you uh write children's books and other people draw them but you write children's books picture books and um and then and you also enjoy them so that is your dorkdom and i'm all i'm all for it but yours is called princess unlimited and then you have another one called lyric mccarrigan right exactly right yep those are two so far two so far well welcome to the program uh jacob sager weinstein how are you I'm fine. I am delighted to be here. There we go. Let us let us dork out. I love picture books, quite honestly. Uh, I say that they're for children, but are they? Remember that uh, Go the Fuck to Sleep book? Remember that? Uh, that was a picture book and that had the F word in it. So how how will we know? How will we know? Yeah, it's, it's true. I mean, so some of the people talk about picture books as a genre, but they're yeah. really, they're a medium, right? It's like, and it's like film. You can have films for grownups, you can have films for kids, you can have cowboy films, musical films, picture oh, books right. are the same way. Same way. Genre is uh, anyone, I mean, the cool thing about it is that anyone can write them and anyone can read them, but not anyone can kind of get them published, right? Yes, definitely. And because it, because I, of the art component, unless you are a writer artist and you self-publish, it's pretty hard. It's got to be, you got to figure out somebody who knows how to make the squiggles. Uh, okay. So one of the, the interesting things about the way the business works is that if you are going the traditional publishing route, you have nothing to do with the artist. So like I, I send off my text, I sell it to a publisher, and then the publisher will sort of give me a heads up. They'll be like, we'd like this artist. Is that okay? And, and that they're is not all. really asking. Exactly. <laughs> they're not really asking. They're like, we I mean, have they, this they, guy. They wanna, exactly. And they want to make sure it's like, if I said, no, actually that artist killed my parents. They'd be like, okay, right. <laughs> that, for that reason, we'll, we'll change it. But short of that, it's. Right. Short of that, you are so sad, too bad. Uh, <laughs> Is that how you? I've been, I've been so happy, toe tappy. I don't know what the opposite of so sad, too bad is. I've been very lucky with my artists so far, but but there's no guarantee. How did you get into it? How did? Why do you like them so much? I know why I like them, but why do you like them? I don't have any kids. You have kid, right? You have at least one kid, right? Yeah, exactly. I got two. Um, I uh, I had to kick them both off the internet before we started this fall. Oh, um, sure. Uh, but so, yeah, so I think that, so for me, and I think for a lot of people, this is like a dorkdom that has two origin stories. And the first one is Ooh. before I remember, right? Like my parents read picture books to me when I was a kid. At some point I like came into consciousness already loving picture books. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then, you know, you get to be big. You're like too cool for them. Certainly like you're as a teenager, you're not having picture books for heaven's sake. Right. Um, and then when my own kids were born and I started reading them again, I'm like, 
these are amazing. There is so much good writing. There is so much incredible art. This is like an awe-inspiring art form. Uh, and so for me, that, that sort of second time is yeah. the time that sort of stuck and made it a grown-up thing for me. Right, right. It, it is amazing because when we were little or when I was little, um, there were there were picture books. It was jaded and and Doug or Bob or whatever the fuck. Uh, wow. A lot of swearing <laughs> already. Picture books should be for children. Uh, this episode clearly got a couple of F-bombs, but um, the. But they weren't. It's interesting because some some of the picture books have better art. I think that the that the way it's it's moved forward, the art is in is has gotten so much better. And um like there were chapter books that had art. Yes. And then there were books that were like A is for Aardvark and then a picture of an Aardvark, right? Yes. Yeah, I mean I think there have always been beautifully done picture books, but I think that that it's gotten better and better as time goes on. Um, and I think, I think there's a few reasons for that. I think that partly the people who grew up liking the good picture books get inspired to make good ones themselves. Right. Yeah. So what ones, what ones do you remember from you were when, like when you first started reading them to your kids, did you grab the ones from your childhood or did you just grab whatever was at the bookstore? Okay. So it's a little of both. Uh, and by the way, this is, this is one of the reasons it's, it's a hard business because I'm not just competing with whoever publishes the book this year. I'm competing with like everything Dr. Seuss ever wrote for 40 years. So. <laughs> right. Right. Oh yeah. Dr. Seuss, that asshole. And uh, Dr. Exactly. Seuss, it's uh, that guy got a corner of the market that him and his rhyming egg talk. Okay. So um, <laughs> what? Exactly. And I'm going to, I'm going to be like, like, for, like, look, who do you want to read? Dr. Seuss or Jacob Sager Weinstein? Surely. <laughs> it's a, it's a tough right. competition. Right. I but, mean, it helps if, if, cause there's also ones where, you can put your kid's name into them. They're like choose your own adventure. Those ones. Yeah. There's and then there's then there's a whole other genre of pop up books. Yes. So yeah, I'm gonna and, and, and some of those are like the paper the engineering in those is sometimes amazing. But I'm gonna actually stop talking for a second and let you wax uh, <laughs> because I have too many questions. So please tell me about the pop up books that you love or the picture books. Oh. How, how, how the ones that you started with and how, how it's coming. Let's hear it. Okay. Sorry. So, so I, well, I want, no, no, those are great questions. And I, I want to go back to something you said, because you asked, did you, did you get your kids the, the ones you read or the ones that were in the stores? And I, I mentioned the ones I read, but part of the cool thing about the ones in stores is, so I, I live in London. You can tell from my accents, I'm American, but my right. kids were born here. They grew up here. So like when I go into a bookstore, there'd be some of the ones I knew, but then there'd also be all these ones that like, Every, everybody who's my age in Britain grew up reading, but I have never heard of. And so I got to discover all these classics that yeah. were totally unknown to me. Right, right. Yeah, that's amazing. And I can tell you live in London because Big Ben is behind you in that tiny room. Uh, there you go. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, so. yeah, the bombs are constantly interrupting. It drives me crazy, but what can you do? What can you do? Hey, a double-decker bus. Okay, so, um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, so, so you got to see sort of their classics and, and the new that were coming along as well. Exactly. Okay. So um, what, so, what are I your, so your, yeah, go ahead. Oh, so I was gonna say, so I, I've, I've got, a, I'm sitting here, I've got a pile of books to, to talk about. And, and that's a perfect segue for one of them, which is, so I was thinking, I wanted to talk about one of those English books that I like discovered when I moved here. And so I'm bringing the most English title I could find for a children's <laughs> book. Are you ready? Brace yep. yourself. It is The Tiger Who Came to Tea. The Tiger Who Came to Tea is adorable. That is a giant tiger sitting in a chair with a, a tiny person at a card table. Oh my exactly. God. And it's who, who wrote that? The Tiger Who Came okay, to Tea. So, so this is a woman named Judith Kerr, who uh, she came to England when she was nine. She and her families, they were they were Jewish refugees from the Nazis in the 1930s. OK, um, so and one of the cool things about her for me as somebody who, who writes these books, she has a, a great quote. So she she learned like the first language she learned was German. Then she had to learn English. And she feels that 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 English is much harder, like German. When you read a word, you say it the way it looks. English, oh. all bets are off. The Germans are a tidy people, especially when they're when they're <laughs> w w when they're saying words. Uh, the English, oh my gosh, we're all over the place. So, yes, exactly. I, so, so she said, because, yes, oh excellent. So, so and she said, and I, I wrote this quote down because I, I want to remember it. Because uh, English is so much harder, children shouldn't have to read any unnecessary words. 
the worst thing you can do is draw a picture of a boy in blue shorts and say, here's a boy in blue shorts. And I. Oh, interesting, because the, uh, that feels like kind of a baby book where you could break it down for your baby, like your toddler, when you're going, here's a boy in blue shorts. Can you find the blue shorts? Can you find the boy? Can you find the. All right. And uh, put it together. And so that's a task. And that's OK, but it certainly isn't compelling uh, narrative. I mean, that's not that's not the story that any kid wants to hear. Yeah, great. All right. What about him? And <laughs> exactly. And, and this goes back to sort of our talk about how like how a lot of good books come out of people being inspired by good books. They also come out of people being inspired by bad books. And, and Judith Kerr has said one of the reasons she started writing, she her books were like in the 50s and 60s, where okay. a lot of the books that were available to her were here is a boy in blue shorts, like that kind of functional, yeah. but totally uninspiring stuff. Right, right. She put a tiger in a chair and now that tiger's coming to tea. So that's exactly. exciting. Uh, so what, so what, so people open up your YouTubes, start looking at this because this is one that has pictures. Jacob, show me a picture, read me a page. Okay. Please. So exactly. So, I'm, so what I figured I'd do is I would read them and maybe you can describe the pictures to make this oh. interactive. So Ooh, it's a if, game. If you're up for that. Yeah, yeah, let's exactly. do it. Okay. And so, by the way, if you're listening, you may want to pause, go get your pajamas on, get your favorite teddy. <laughs> We're going to read you some stories. It'll be great. Get a little so. tea. Go with a breakfast. Go with an Irish or an English breakfast tea. Anyway, go. Sounds lovely. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, The Tiger Who Came to Tea by Judith Kerr. Once there was a little girl called Sophie, and she was having tea with her mummy in the kitchen. Suddenly, there was a ring at the door. And Jackie, do you want to describe what you're seeing? OK, so there's Sophie and her mom uh, having some tea. Her mom is pouring. Very beautiful. Uh, she's got some polka dot, uh, awesome polka dot tights on. They're both wearing <laughs> a nice shoe and uh, she's got a bow in her hair. Her mom has a tiny hat and they're having a lovely tea at a table. Exactly. And you can see the clothes. It's like very 1960s. She's got like these checkered tights. Um, yeah. So yeah. Or the checkered. The art on that is very, it's very sparse and uh, spare, but also brightly colored and very pretty, actually. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And so one thing I want to point out here, this is like a little technical thing, but the last line on this page is suddenly there was a ring at the door. So in picture books, we talk about, as a picture book writer, is we talk about the page turn, right? Mm -hmm. Which is the moment where you turn, obviously, from one illustration to the next. Mm -hmm. And in picture books, the page turn is like the dissolve or the cut to in film. It's this moment right. of transition. Okay. And so a good writer will use that to create suspense. So as simple as it sounds to say, suddenly there was a ring at the door, right? It raises this question. Kids want to know who's at the door. It and, drives you forward. And the, and the, the, we see no in the background. We don't see a ding dong in the background, which is interesting because I would have probably drawn the bell going like us hearing that so that nobody had to live in that suspense. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But, but that's, I'm you're, wrong. you're too kind. You have to, you right, have to exactly. you can't let the reader off that easy. You got to squeeze them. <laughs> um, but also, but I mean, that gets to what Judith Kerr said about how like you don't, if you've got it in the text, you don't necessarily need it in the picture that you've got this. Right. They work together, right? You show both things. Okay. So suddenly there was a ring at the door, page turn. Sophie's mummy said, I wonder who that can be. It can't be the milkman because he came this morning. It can't be the boy from the grocer because this isn't the day he comes. And it can't be daddy because he's got his key. We'd better open the door and see. It's another oh suspenseful God. moment. We are dragging out the suspense on this, Judith, seriously. Uh, so <laughs> the art on this is nice because we got mom standing doing a monologue, uh, which is nice. <laughs> Pardon me. And... Um, and there's the milkman, there's the grocer's boy, and there's dad uh, wearing his hat, uh, holding his keys. Right, and, the, and so these are all the people who it's not. Uh, and right. Anyway, talking about dragging up the suspense, I want to say something, because like, it's not that suspenseful, right? Because the book is called The Tiger Who Came to Tea. <laughs> I, you could probably guess who's at the door, right? It does. It, uh, spoiler alert, you guys. Uh, right there <laughs> in the cover of the page is uh, this whole thing about the tiger. Okay, yeah, yeah. And uh, but uh, now here's the thing. Would it be reviewed on Rotten Tomatoes as, you know, the tiger comes to tea. He doesn't come till page four. What's happening? And uh, anyway, but let's yeah, let's get to it. OK, but actually, but that's a good point. And, and one of the things I want to say about this is is so this is dramatic irony, right? We, the audience, we know something the characters don't. We know it's a tiger, for heaven's sake. <laughs> but but the cool thing about that is kids books, picture books are love dramatic irony, because if you are a kid 
you constantly have grown-ups knowing things you don't, or at least acting like they know, right? You're constantly told you won't understand, uh, you'll know right. you figure. So, so right now, if you're a kid, first of all, you probably read this book a thousand times, but even if this is your first time, you know it's called a tiger who came to tea. So when mummy is spending a whole page saying, I wonder who's at the door, the kid is going, it's a tiger, it's a tiger. Oh my God, that is outstanding. That is, that is excellent book writing is what that is for a child giving them the power that is that's what books should do holy shit again with the swearing uh holy smokes uh, <laughs> you giving children the power to swear that's great I'm, you're liberating I'm them power. just like yeah, yeah. get in there get in there kids okay <laughs> Um, but yeah, so exactly. So, but I love what you said about giving them power because I mean, well, that's that's what kids' books are in so many ways, and, and I think we'll talk about that in some other books, um, uh, or even here. So, okay, so next page. Sophie opened the door, and there was a big, furry, stripy tiger. The tiger said, "Excuse me, but I'm very hungry. Do you think I could have tea with you?" Sophie's mummy said, "Of course, come in." Oh my gosh! So the tiger came into. Oh, Sorry. Go ahead. Um, no, no, please. Remember. So the tiger came into the kitchen and sat down at the table. Okay, so uh, what do we see? We see uh, tiger head and paw uh, as so Sophie answers the door. And he's like, uh, he does not look terrifying. He just looks uh, curious. And then uh, he is invited. He has said, yes, you can have some tea. And then the three of them are sitting at that table enjoying tea. Um, or uh, about to enjoy tea, I imagine. That is great. Yeah, exactly. And, and so I want to talk about the art a little bit because, um, you know, you've pointed out that it's like simple but beautiful art. And I think that that often people underestimate picture book art because often it is simple or simplified. Um, but one thing I think you can look for if you want to sort of begin to enter into appreciating how good picture book art can be is to look at the composition rather than the yeah. detail. Okay. And so, so that, that picture you were telling us about of them sitting ready to have tea, what I want to point out is that the tiger is in... I guess you'd say two planes of the composition. He's, he's in the back and he's, this, he's yeah. huge. He's in a, you can see him, he's in the, the background and he's, he's twice as tall as Sophie. He's like 50% taller than Sophie's mom. So he dominates that part. But then his tail curves under the table and pops out in front. So he's not just controlling the back of the frame, he's controlling the front. So he's this really dominating presence. But if you look at his face, it is the most gentle, cutest happy smile and sophie and, and the mom are smiling you know they're not at all scared right right this is this is what this is is this is a, a tiger with the manners is what you can tell this looks like a very polite tiger who's not gonna he's like ah, i am weirdly hungry and i do have to invite myself to tea but uh, i will sit here politely we will, you will not regret this and <laughs> exactly yeah, these, all, all english tigers like your american tigers have no manners but we english <laughs> we, we've taught our tigers well um but this gets back to what you said about giving kids power that like a tiger is a scary wild thing and here yeah. it is coming into your home but friendly and cute mm -hmm. um and i feel like like this is again delivering on the promise of the title the tiger who came to tea like a, it's the tiger this is like a big scary wild thing who right. came to tea right yeah it yeah. It's immediately softens it um, that is so great so, oh, and, and the other thing I want to say is, again, getting back to that thing that Judith Kerr said about you don't have to repeat in the text what you say in the art. Nowhere in the whole book does it ever say the tiger was friendly. Sophie was not afraid. It's just what we see it in the faces and the body right. language. Yes, that is great. What a great picture book. It is amazing. Yeah. And so I, I will I'll resist the urge to read the whole thing. Um, OK, but, but how I'll, does it end up? How does it end up? How does it uh, does should, okay, should spo I, yes. spoiler alert for the tiger. So the tiger was sort of breeze through it. So the tiger is sort of wild. He drinks the tea right out of the teapot. He drink, he eats and drinks everything in the house. He, so okay. he's this, he is, does have this wildness, um, yeah. which again is a thing that kids love, is this character breaking the rules in a sort of a non-scary sure. way. Yeah. Um, and then I'll show you the la one of the last things. At the end, the tiger says, thank you for my nice tea. I'd better go now. And he leaves, <laughs> and there's never an explanation. At no point does it say, you know, this Jew doesn't call and say, by the way, we've lost a hungry tiger. Right, he's right, just right. There. The, the, yeah, the, he's just, you know, occasionally tomorrow he'll be in a different house asking for tea in a different place. Interesting, interesting. And now she's got to clean the kitchen. Is that what's happening? That's exactly right. Yeah, yeah. That will, That'll... yeah. Now mom has to, and then dad comes home because uh, this is the 1960s. So mom, feeds the kids and the tigers and dad comes home from work. Um, oh, yeah. And then it ends on this beautiful, 
calm note. They would just walk through the streets of London to get dinner because the tiger ate everything. Oh, um, right. And it's just such a peaceful, it's a nighttime scene. Oh, here, I'll describe it. Sorry, I don't want to. Uh, please. Oh, no, no. It, it is very, first of all, sometimes with picture books, I kind of like it when they when they do fill the whole page, which is what I'm surprised about this picture book is that it was white background and all action, right? And this yes. last one isn't, it's action, but it's mostly just, you could see the whole world. The whole world is there because the, the streets aren't teeming with violence. Uh, <laughs> the streets yeah. are fine. It's a nice night out. They're all bundled up because it's a little chilly. And, um, and they're, they're going to, and, the, and they're a nice little family going out to dinner. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's pretty. And I mean, that's a really, yeah. And it's a really interesting point you make about how, so about how so much of the book is, like you say, just the action with the white background. Um, and so one of the, another pick, technical picture book term is spreads. So when you open a picture book and you see two pages across from each other, that's one spread. Yeah. And so it's like if, if the page turn is like the cut, the spread is like a scene. Right. Um, and so, so if you're a good writer or artist, you think about the rhythm of your book where you have some things that are like a big spread that covers everything. Sometimes you have spreads where there's like you know, two different images. Sometimes you have multiple images. Um, right. And all that goes into the rhythm of the book. Okay, that's awesome. And that's the last page is that sort of calm, hey, we're going to go out to dinner. Yeah, oh, sorry, then there's like a little coda, which I always forget when they actually get the dinner. But to me, it's just that last page is the, like, you know what? the, the, the calm. Here's, a, here's the thing about a nice story. Everybody uh, likes a denouement. Everyone wants a little, well, then what happened? Is, is everyone still happy back at their own home? Yes, they are. It turns out in this picture book. So they have to go out to dinner, exactly. but they're back home safe and it's all good. Exactly. That's great. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So, and so, so, and I want to stress that, that every, every book I'm going to talk about is kid approved. So I love that, but my kids also love that. So that's, oh, that's definitely, great. yes. How old yeah. are your kids? Just vaguely. Uh, so they are currently, uh, I have like a teenager and a tween right okay. now. So they're, they're past the official picture book age. Right, right. So, but that was one of their favorites when they were littler. And exactly. Do you want to show us, because we are at 20 minutes, my friend. Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> I know. Let me see one of yours. Let me see like the Princess Unlimited okay. or Lyric. By okay. the way, I am talking with Jacob Sager Weinstein. You can get his picture books. He has two picture books out. You could order them from the people who sell picture books. And Princess Unlimited or Lyric McCarrigan uh, are adorable. There's Princess Unlimited. Over. Well, thank you. Yeah. And here's, here's Lyric McCarrigan. And uh, the other thing I brought is I brought, I want you to be able to see the stages of the picture book. So here's what Princess Unlimited looks like now. And, and for those of you who are listening, I'm just holding up, you know, a picture book. A hardcover book. Yeah. How many pages? Exactly. Uh, it's, it's 15 spreads. I think I sort of tend okay. to think in terms of spreads. There's, so, so it, there's very specific page counts that picture books have having to do with the manufacturing process. So yeah. again, I won't basically depending on like how many copyright pages you have and stuff like that you have a certain you've got like a limited number of pages to work with. so 12 to 16 spreads is how right. i tend to think of a picture so it's like 24 to 30 pages which feels exactly. a little long for me but that's because i have uh 14 nieces and nephews and yes. um so um there is like when they're babies you get them the those books that are super thick yes that they mostly just suck on and then you open them up and you're like really <laughs> And uh, so, yes. and and those and those are usually just four or five pages, right? So, right, absolutely. But these are full stories, so these are more yes. for like, I would say, three to six year olds, right? Kind of thing. Though they so, could go so later, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've often heard four to eight, but it's it's it, in any case, it's like there's no specific age, just whatever is right for the kid. But yeah, yeah. I mean, it's interesting, and we should talk about this. I, I'd like to, if we have time, we'll talk about one older picture book because, like, four to eight is—it's only four years, but that is a huge age range in terms of sophistication and ability to understand language and narrative. Right, right, right. But let's do yours first, just because I yes, want to yeah, do yeah. that, and and then and then we'll do uh, other ones, and and then I just want to say for the for the for the uh just for the record that that i got back into picture books and pop-up books and all the great art books by go because i love an art museum gift shop which oh, has yeah. the weirdest gifts in the world they have interesting books gifts that you don't see anywhere else you can't you're just like 
where'd you get? I bought a pair of sneakers at a gift shop. They were $300, which by the way, was a lot of money, uh, but not for sneaker heads, but a lot of money. And so I don't ever wear them out. I only bring them to the show and then I put them on, but, uh, but they, uh, but they they have very unique gifts that are, um, and sometimes they're more expensive, but, but they reflect that sort of uniqueness and and the and sometimes the art is much nicer and it's kind of amazing anyway so yeah so show me show me the princess yeah okay um but 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 just i mean the i promise we'll talk about my book but i just want to say that that one of the great things about like art museum picture books is you know that they care about the art you know they're going to be printed beautifully it's going to be like the absolute artist's vision reproduced on the page and that's fantastic yeah yeah that is awesome okay Oh, who okay. did the art so, on Judith Kerris, by the way, I, before I forget? Judith Kerris so herself. Sorry. She she was a writer-artist. Holy smokes. She survived yes. the Holocaust and was a writer. Ar- yeah, yeah. Uh, fuck the nuts. Yeah, she was great. Okay, she so great. Uh, yes. again with the swearing. So, uh, okay, so, uh, but in, in context. So there we go. I think uh, that's okay, yeah. That I is just anybody, fun. Nazis are okay. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys, don't don't break people. People, uh, there's a lot of talent out there. So anyway, so go ahead. Uh, go okay. Through. Okay, so uh, Princess Unlimited by Jacob Sager Weinstein. Woo! I'm sorry. Actually, I want to be, I don't say written by Jacob Sager Weinstein, because one right. of my pet peeves is when people say a book is by the writer, because it's by the writer and the artist. It is okay. very clever. Yes, very much so, so especially uh, with this kind of book. Yeah. Exactly. So Princess Unlimited, written by Jacob Sager Weinstein, illustrated by Raisa Figueroa. Okay. All right. Uh, oh, and so there's often in picture books, there's like the little sort of like frontispiece. I don't know the technical term for it. Like the little, like a dedication, copyright page that sets the tone. So right, you're right. to describe what you're seeing on this one before the story even starts. It looks spooky. Do you know what? There yeah. might be like sword and sorcery. It's a Princess Unlimited. So uh, we're in sort of a, I would say a foggy moor or a foggy kind of uh, landscape. And there's a yeah. castle and there's a light bulb. And uh, yeah, <laughs> let's let's get into it. It looks like it could be. All scary, right. but it could be it adventure. Could be. Uh, let's find out. Okay. Princess Susan lived in a castle high atop a hill in a room's fill, sorry, in a room filled with sparkles and frilly dresses. So tell us what you see. Okay. So she's in a room that is pink. It's got some pinky stuff going on. There's a little bit of a what's the circle? What's the circle thing? Oh, that is a target. And she's got uh, she's been practicing her bow and arrow shooting. Oh, okay. So she is also a badass. And uh, and then um, what's on her bed? Is there a doll uh, or something? Ah, uh, yeah. So it's so uh, she's. And by the way, I just want to stress for anybody listening: the art is very beautiful and very clear. It's just because yeah. I'm showing it on my camera to Jackie over Zoom. It's like right, right. and it use. isn't centered, so it is very oh, sorry, beautiful. Here. And it and it looks there kind of it, yeah, and it looks kind of um, yeah. it looks kind of watercolor. Do the do the artists do? Maybe probably not, but uh, but it has that sort of that 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 wash to it that I kind of love. Yeah, yeah. She, I think she did it all digitally, but it has this sort of classic Disney, like a very modern take on a classic Disney feel that I really yeah. love. Yeah, it um, has both that sort of um, um, who was the scary witch uh, with the 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 first terrifying Disney movie with the witch. Oh, uh, it wasn't yes. Cinderella. Uh, like, it was Sleeping Beauty. Is that the... it's Sleeping Beauty? Oh, Snow White. Yeah, it is. It's, oh, yeah. No, it's Sleeping Beauty. It has yeah, a Sleeping yeah. Beauty vibe, but a little bit more modern than that. What is yes. and is that a is that a flag in the in the corner? Uh, uh, upper left. There's, upper oh, there's left. the curtains. It's like the curtains sort of blowing oh, that's, in. Oh, there you um, go. Fair enough. Yeah. Very beautiful. Yeah. yeah uh, it's very beautiful. Well, but you. she's on her bed wearing her crown. Yes. Why wouldn't she? She is a princess. Exactly. Wear her crown. Exactly. Um, so, so, so we, said, we said that Princess Cat Susan lives atop the hill, but down below the kingdom had a problem, a dragon problem. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, uh, the people do not look pleased. Uh, there's a dragon shed, that cool dragon shadow, and uh, and they are kind of cowering and unhappy. <laughs> that is exactly. awesome. Yeah. And, and one thing that I, I don't think probably you can see over Zoom, but as a detail I'll point out, so you've got like the little knight whose, whose job is to battle the, the dragon. He is not well armored. Instead of a sword, he has a stick with hedgehogs attached. Oh, that is not good. That is not going to, that's not going to be effective. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Why don't you buy the knight swords instead of making them use hedgehogs and drinking straws, the princess asked. <laughs> 
I spent all the royal gold on sparkles and frills, said the king. A princess needs frills. They help her look fancy, agreed the queen. I don't need to look fancy, the princess said. I need to help the kingdom. Let me earn more gold. But the king and queen weren't listening. Well, isn't that the way it is with when you're a kid? Nobody's listening. It's very, very disappointing because exactly. you know, you know how to fix this. Uh, yeah, that's great. That's given the power back yeah. to the kids, which I think is so, that's awesome. Yeah. Exactly. That is probably, this is probably a good time. Oh, sorry. To talk right. about it. So the reason I talked about how like sometimes people are inspired to write a book because they read a good one and sometimes a bad one. Yeah. So I was inspired to write this because somebody gave my, like my daughter went through a princess phase and sure. somebody gave her like the worst princess picture book, which is the princesses love to sit in the castle. The princess looks pretty all day long. I was like, I don't want my, that's not what I want my daughter to do. So, no, so no. As, it's like, yeah, she got a paper cut. Oh no. Anyway. So yeah, get out of the house. Okay. Go run around. Exactly. Get yourself so sort of, a skateboard. Sort of, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that'd be cool. Um, but yeah, so I, so I sort of put that voice into like the parents in this case and then have the kid be the one who's like, this is crap. That's yeah. So, okay. so um, I, I, by the way, as, as a picture book author, when I say crap, that's like, I, that's shocking to me. I've just like shocking. I've How opened up happen? my swear word bag. Oh and my God. Crazy. Exactly. Now um, it's open. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. But so the king and queen weren't listening. Um, Psst, whispered Eleanor, the scullery maid. There's a job opening in the kitchen. Oh, okay. So she, she has a little friend who can, can get her some extra cash. Is that a dog? I yes. Love okay. a, I love so a this, tiny dog. Yeah. It is an adorable dog. And this is probably a good place to talk about sort of the, the way that the art, the artist and the writer works together. So, yeah. um, so like I said, I had very little say in the artist. And what would happen is the editor would come to me and everyone's while she'd say, I'm thinking about this artist. What do you think? And I'd be like, I guess they don't speak to me, but whatever you think. And then she, she like went through on a two that weren't quite right. And then she, when she said, what, okay, I've chosen an artist. It's this woman, Reza Figueroa. Here's a link to her page. I, I was like, oh my God, I, you've got it. This is, she is so, it's just, it's just, it's that, that classic feeling. And it's, just, right. it's like this Where it's magical adorable, swirling. But it's magical. Yeah. Yeah. It's, exactly. but it's, and it's, but it's strong too. I mean, there's strong lines in it where you can actually see the detail on the kids' faces and there's, there's good detail and it's, and it's, it's smart is what I, is what I, it feels like smart art and that, but it's also has that, you know, sort of bigger than life, larger than life kind of uh, princessy feel to it, which is awesome. Exactly. Yeah. And I love that she can do, do both those things, all those things. Um, and so then I, so then once the artist is chosen, I'm like out of the picture um, for however many months it takes for the artist to do it. Like I'm not going back and forth. It's just like the editor is working with the artist. Okay. Um, uh, and I, oh, so, I, so all they have is your script and they can yes. do put anything in that scene from that, those four sentences, from those three or four sentences. Okay. Exactly right. So it's it's kind of like being, I think, a screenwriter where sometimes they let you on the set, but a lot of times they don't. And, right. and it's it makes a certain amount of sense because probably you don't become a writer because you're good dealing with people face to face. Or 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 and, and vision is different, like like bringing it like with comic books or with um with animation, you know, there's there's yeah, it's it's another skill set. And as long as you do you have some input when it's still storyboard. I have, I usually don't. So the, the okay. book I have currently, I have a book currently in progress that is okay. the, the nonfiction story of, of my mom's escape from the Nazis. Wow. Um, and because that's fact-based and based on my family history, I'm very involved in that because they don't want to yeah. do something that had to go. I, I, my mom did not have a cell phone in 1938 <laughs> or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. Where um, did that bird come from? Anyway, fair enough. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You just some um, input but, when it's a fact-based thing. So but exactly. no, but usually not. So that dog was not in the dialogue at all. But there's a dog dressed as a princess. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so the dog, the dog actually is the artist's dog or her, her, uh, her late dog, sadly. Um, but but so, yeah. And so the so basically I write things other than picture books. And when I when I read something that's not a picture book that I wrote, I can't stand it. It's just painful. But oh. I love to read my own picture books because there's like this other stuff in it that the artist put in. Right. There's a whole other layer of you're just like, oh, my God, you've made it better. 
kind of thing. Exactly. Or, exactly. Sadly, if 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 unfortunately, if someone were to make it worse, but but for the most part, you're psyched. If I mean, if it's done well, and or even if it's done just okay, you're just like, oh, good. Well, at least they they got it. They you know, yeah, and that's fine too. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I, honestly, like I'm, I would be happy with just like competent art, but I've been so lucky. Like this, and also Lyric McCarrigan, the artists are amazing. And so, so one thing I want to say about this to sort of talk about the like the, what happens when the artist gets their hands on it. So this this line here, which is uh, psst, whispered, Eleanor, the scholarly maid. There's a job opening in the kitchen. So in my original text, that's like a pretty functional line, right? It's like yeah. it's a plot point. You need to know she's going to go to the kitchen next. But if you look at what Raisa did with it there is it's like this becomes this incredibly emotional scene do you want to sort of talk right. about like the body yeah, language yeah. there and yeah the, because the princess is just devastated she is just glumped onto a onto a table and she's like ah oh, they don't get me they don't get anything and then there's this dog who is dressed in a tiara and <laughs> pearls and then tiny scholarly lady uh maid comes over and is like no no don't don't, don't there's always an answer we'll figure something out okay yeah i love that and then the sun yeah, coming it, in over by the scullery maid is where the hope comes from. And um, and then and sad sack princess is just sitting sort of with a white background. Yeah, that's exactly. Awesome. That's beautifully described. And so so this moment that was like a very functional plot point, it still serves that function. You still get yeah. the information. But now you have this emotion. And because like the little scullery maid here is going to become spoiler alert the best friend of the princess. Yeah. Now that relationship has this really emotional foundation where you see, you know, nobody got the princess, but this girl did. And, yeah. and that's what the relationship is now based on. Oh, that is awesome. That, um, well, I say we move to the next book, even because this okay. is, I do want to read this one. And I don't want yeah, to, okay. I bet you it all works out, out. But, uh, but uh, that is, that is gorgeous. That is actually very, very beautiful. What about, what uh, le, le, actually, Give me a couple of pages of the other one, the Lyric McCarrigan. Lyric McCarrigan, Secret Librarian. Yes, let me get that. Uh, so Lyric McCarrigan, Secret Librarian. Uh, so <laughs> you um, know that uh, can I briefly, I will anecdotally yes. interrupt your your lovely dorkdom, which oh, to say please. that when I first started reading comic books, um, because I read them a little bit in junior high, but then I married uh my native Sherpa into the comic book world. And he liked a lot of superhero books, and I weeded off and I would get into these other books. And one of them was um what the Rex Libris. And Rex Libris, well, nobody knows that one. It's ridiculous. It is Lex Rex Libris is a superhero librarian, uh intergalactic. And he goes with um, his he's he's got a gun, you guys, because he's got to get these books back because they're overdue. And, uh, and so he goes around the universe and people have stole. I mean, people have essentially stolen books from the library and they are right. like the ne Necronomicon. Right. I mean, they're very powerful books. Oftentimes they're very uh, magical books or whatever. And the crazy thing about the the the. The comic book Rex Libris, there aren't a lot of them because they, the detail, there are footnotes because he's a librarian, Jacob. And <laughs> there are annotations. There is, uh, there is, it's all text. It's beautiful art of Rex Libris. Uh -huh. And it's kind of this modernist kind of, uh, kind of looks sort of Soviet 1990s, 1980s, um, you know, get them and uh the that sounds uh, amazing black and red and a lot of you know he's always wearing a suit with a tie he kind of looks like greg proops or buddy holly right and um <laughs> uh -huh. but but more greg proops because he's giant and uh but the but he goes and he's sometimes like i have a statue of rex libris that the comic i love this thing so bad the comic book uh was the first gift you know the first one's free because that's how they get you. <laughs> exactly. And uh, but exactly. it is it is a small statue of Lex like Rex Libris holding a book with his gun and he's standing on a monster hand, and it is some amazing art. But uh, if you get a chance to read Rex Libris, I would recommend. Yeah, that. I'm, I'm going to write that down because I I am a sucker for for superhero librarians basically. Right, Rex, Rex and Libris. so and that's okay, yeah. what that's what the lyric McCarrigan sounds yes. like a little bit to me. So what what yeah, tell me about that. Exactly. Okay. So, um, 
so so this one so I, I read a news article a while ago about a guerrilla librarian that's like g-u-e-r-i-l-l-a oh, oh fair who enough would like sneak into phone booths in new york and like just use phone booths and turn them into little libraries yes and so for a while i thought like some like guerrilla librarian was a good title but then i then i thought okay well maybe kids will think it's a gorilla which is a different story which would be also a good story an amazing um, story there what's happening there yeah yeah um, but so then I, I said, okay, secret librarian. And then for like a year, I would walk around going to myself like, Bobby Ferrifin, secret life? No, like <laughs> Janet Jajerichin. And then one day I thought, Lyric McCarrick and secret librarian. And it's like, one of these, like, once I got the title, I just like sat down and wrote the book. So it's like, I think my subconscious started writing a book, but it's like, we're not moving anything till you have the right name. Right, so. Babana Fana Fulferican. Yeah, yeah. It's just, exactly. it, yeah, yeah. That'll, that, it'll all come together. That's awesome. Yeah. So, L- Lyric uh, McCarrigan, is he Scottish? Uh, she. So, she, she. Oh, there you go. We, yeah. So, we don't, we don't really, we don't go into her backstory too much. By the way, the, the other thing that's sort of interesting uh, is when I wrote the book, so I pictured her like the librarians I grew up with, who are these lovely elderly ladies. And mm-hmm. you can see she is not an elderly lady. No. Um, do you remember in It's a Wonderful Life, uh, the worst case scenario was his wife turns into a librarian. And I was like, no, that sounds kind of awesome. It sounds she's not, <laughs> wait, she's not, she's not a carpenter and raising three kids by herself. What's happening? Okay, so uh, <laughs> four kids. <laughs> but so yeah, so a young, uh, a young librarian, though I do enjoy the glasses. Is yes, she wearing yeah. glasses? And so she she is wearing glasses and she's got there purple go. hair and a scarf. And it's actually sort of interesting. So so the artist has drawn her a little bit ambiguous. Like she could actually be a kid, right? She could be like a young grown up or like just yeah. a kid who's a librarian, um, which I think is sort of interesting. There's there's sort of an idea in picture books that kids don't want to read about grown ups, which I don't think is at all true. But no. but most picture book characters on that assumption are kids. Um, what even um, though I, what's the name of the artist on this uh, one? The artist, same, she's same artist? She's, oh. she is. Vera Roskell, and if you if you know comic books, you may know her. She got an Eisner Award for oh, dude. Uh, for, for um, Anya's Ghost, I think is the name of the book. I I'm, read Anya's I'm Ghost. I think. Yeah, I think I did. Yeah. Anyway, Vera, uh, how book. do you spell how do you spell her last name? B R O S G O L. G O L. There we go. Broskell. Yeah. And yeah, uh, she is amazing. Yeah. And she does a lot of comic books, and so she. She took like a very comic booky style with this, which works great for like a superhero librarian. Yeah, yeah. Um, shall I shall I read it to you or how should Please. I start? Yeah, yeah. Let's okay. let's so, see kind of some of the some of the art and hear some of the story. That'd yeah. be great. So Lyric McCarrick and Secret Librarian, written by Jacob Sager Weinstein, illustrated by Vera Brosco. Uh, and again, here's like another one of those like little word oh, splash pages. pages. Yeah, the splash giant, page, good word. Yeah. yeah, it's um, yeah, the uh, I love that. The 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 book I love a bookcase man that is just yeah. it's so cool looking and then a wanted a wanted thing what's that all about yes okay so this is a little bit of foreshadowing it says wanted Glockenspiel and there's a very crazy looking guy on the little wanted poster there okay so, Doctor Glockenspiel has escaped from his cell and that dun, is the dun, entirety. Dun. Of the text on the first page, you want to tell us what the the art is? Wow, sort of see it. Yeah, there. Uh, clearly, people are looking for them. Those are those are searchlights, or is that a road? Yes, yeah, searchlights, huh? Searchlights. So they're looking for Glockenspiel, and then we see the essentially it looks like Arkham Asylum, uh, like yes. uh, the uh, the 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 rot gates and the and the and it it looks like it. He escaped at night because that's when you should escape because that's when sneakery works the best. I don't know if you ever read exactly. Flat Stanley, but uh, Flat Stanley. Yeah. Um, yeah. Flat Stanley saved, you know, it's, uh, you know, there was there was a guy stealing art and he used sneakery because that's how uh, people steal things. They use sneakery anyway. So um, that's how Flat so, Stanley. The, the first thing. The first thing I ever remember writing was basically a total ripoff of Flat Stanley that I did in fourth grade, where about my fourth grade teacher who gets like trampled flat and becomes like flat. <laughs> as his eye, as the- there is something about fourth grade. We used to write, uh, we had to write a lot of fiction in fifth grade for some reason. My English teacher, you know, I, I vilified her, but she was an amazing teacher. Uh, but she, Mrs. Cowth, 
my apologies. Uh, she just liked my sister better than me. Anyway, so uh, but that's she, the worst thing a teacher can do. I, so I was like, come on, I have five siblings. Please do not like all of them more than me. Nobody liked my brothers at all. So uh, that's the good news. But the uh, but the thing is, is all of I wish I still had those stories because I consistently wrote stories where adults were being beat up by children. And uh, <laughs> I was like, wow. All right. Got some issues. All right, then. Feel powerless. OK, so yeah. So OK. Um, yeah. So Flat Stanley was I, I love Flat Stanley. I'd never read it until I was an adult and I had nieces and nephews, but it was pretty great. I, I think it still it holds up, I think, for sure. It does. My only problem with Flat Stanley is I, I thought, like, I remember for many years, I'd like look back on that story I read in fourth grade. I think I was such a creative fourth grader. And then I reread Flat Stanley as a grown up. And I'm like, I ripped it off. <laughs> I was a little plagiarist. <laughs> Tiny plagiarist. Everyone's nine yeah. sometimes. And um, exactly. yeah. And well, and you know, here's what you wouldn't want. You wouldn't want to travel across the country in a cigarette holder, uh, which is what Flat Stanley's uh, parents, they fold him up, stick him in a cigarette holder with some milk and send him to his aunt in California. Uh, that sounds unsanitary and uh, stinky, stinky milk. Okay, with cigarette smell. Uh, okay, so keep going with, with Lyric. Okay, uh, I just want one more thing to say. So talk, again, talking about that relationship between the writing and the art, like, I just wrote a sentence, which was Dr. Glockenspiel has escaped from his cell. No art notes, no, like everything else on this whole spread, these two pages is from Vera's imagination. So yeah. it's very, uh, and it's, you know, look at the book if only for that, because she's a comic artist, it's got this great timing to it. There's like a panel of the, the searchlight slowly searching. And then this hand pops up, touching a spoon from the, from the dirt. And then Dr. Glockenspiel digs himself out of the dirt in the middle of the night. And it's just this amazing sequence that, is, um, that yeah. I, I had nothing to do with. Um, right. <laughs> but it's adorable and awesome. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, okay. Dr. Glockenspiel has escaped from his cell. And now from a secret lair in an Arctic iceberg, he makes his demand. I want one billion trillion dollars or my army of giant moths will eat the world's books moths oh threatening the world's books holding books for ransom uh oh yeah that is amazing okay and i like this giant splash page as well and um yeah it's got a lot of, it's got a lot going on it's pretty great yeah it's, all right next up when does our hero right. come in oh, okay. not yet so we're we're keeping you in suspense and once again i and i can't take credit for this consciously, but it's that thing where, you know, the cover tells you that Lyric McCarrigan is going to come along. And as a yeah. kid, you know that's going to happen, but the grown-ups of the world don't know that yet. The right, world right. sends its best secret agents. Dr. Glockenspiel sends his best henchmen to capture them. Ooh, fight, fight, fight. It's a versus page. It's a splash versus page <laughs> where they're running exactly. at each other slowly. <laughs> awesome. Exactly. And and again, I've, I, I wrote those words and no, nothing else. And so what Vera did is she created basically like all these different um, uh, icons of secret agenthood. So you have like the one with the sword leaping through the air and the very suave one in the tuxedo um, and the guy in the scuba thing. Um, nothing to do with me, just totally stuff. She, out she of her imagination, yeah. Me, yeah. Exactly. And it, uh, this is why I can like read this and get excited about it. Um, okay. Why don't you just describe that wordless page? Oh, that wordless page. It looks like the henchman won. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, a bunch of mugs, a bunch of goo exactly. goony looking mugs are uh, got, got our good guys all wrapped up in cord and they're sitting, sitting around and they're laughing. They're laughing at our good guys who want to save the books from the moths. Boo. All right. Next up. What will the world do? Where can we turn to help? Who loves books so much? She would risk her <laughs> life to save them. Yeah, kids, who do you think it's going to be? Gee, I wonder who. But what I like is that what you have here is you have the public, the public outcry. Uh, and you have different people. And they are, uh, and it's nice because they all have different races. And it's and it's uh, and it's not just all a bunch of whitey magoos. And, um, and there's like a newscaster. And there's a, looks like a mom and a kid. And then there's... Uh, someone standing in front of a, a bookshelf going, who, who could we get? I wonder. Exactly. I wonder <laughs> who it is. 
Lyric McCarrigan, secret <laughs> librarian. Lyric McCarrigan. Oh my God, Lyric McCarrigan, who's by the way, as a parachute made out of uh, a manuscript. Uh, <laughs> there is. Exactly. That's going to really be hard on the binding. Uh, so she's <laughs> jumping out of uh, some sort of. She's in the air somehow. What is above? Oh, that's your hand. Hi, I'm over here. Oh, hi. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> So she is clearly <laughs> uh, parachuting down into the iceberg with the giant uh, dish satellite uh, to fight the good fight. Exactly. Every quarter in the iceberg is watched by security cameras. And one of the guards says, 10,000 cameras and nothing ever happens. I'm so bored. And there's a <laughs> random, totally not suspicious janitor who says, hey, I know how you could pass the time. <laughs> not suspicious not suspicious at all not suspicious at all does it look and, uh, is somebody that that is, oh. yep go ahead oh, sorry, okay. and uh somebody has covered up the security cameras with like books hmm, i wonder who that was Ooh, i wonder as well nice work and uh that yes. must be lyric mccarrigan addressed as just an unassuming janitor yes well let's find out hmm says the security guard and he's, he like gets distracted by the book that this janitor gives him and he's just oh. reading there but but who was that janitor who knew just the right book to mop away boredom? Kids, say it with me. Lyric, Lyric McCarrigan, McCarrigan, secret librarian. <laughs> yes, I will say this. Librarians do know. They have, they have, they're, they've seen enough people reading that you're like, well, what do you like to read? Well, we have books that are sort of like that, but are different than that. And then, um, so that is definitely a superpower of librarians. Exactly. There and that was sort of, that, thank you. So what I was trying to do in this book is I was like, I, I, my first thought was to sort of make it, you know, like spies with gadgets and guns and things like that. But it's like, she's a librarian. It's exactly like you say, what is her superpower? It's the right, right book at the right time. And that's <laughs> right. More of a lateral move. And uh, yes, <laughs> <laughs> to affect change. Well done, Lyric exactly. uh, McCarrigan. All right. So we are, we only have like 10 minutes left. So, oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah, I know. So I knew that this would go very fast, but, um, but yeah, so let's talk about, I mean, the thing is, is there's so many, this is such a great, so now you're, so by the way, I am talking with Jacob Sager Weinstein. It is Jacob SW on the Twitter, and you can get his books uh, where you buy books, uh, Princess Unlimited and Lyric McCarrigan. And so do you think that these books are for the four to eight? Yeah, age? I. so I would say. Yeah, I, I think they're sort of sort of in the middle of it. Um, and if we had if we had more than ten minutes, I'd get into there's a book I love called Watercress, which I didn't write, but which I think is more for the older end of that range. Should we talk about that briefly? Yeah, or... yeah, let's do that. Let's okay. at least see it. Okay, so so whenever possible, I like to buy the actual books rather than like get them on Kindle because yeah. Kindle is not good for picture books, and also I want to fight back against the evil empire of Amazon. But but I could uh-huh. not get a hard copy. So I, I got the um I got this book on Kindle to show you. So it's gonna be really hard for you to see over Zoom. But okay. It's called Watercress. And we we talked about different genres of books, of picture books. And this is like a, a fictionalized memoir. So it's very different from like the big, broad, goofy stuff we've right. been talking about. Um and I don't know how well you'll see the art, but let me let me read you uh the first page if I can. Um yeah, and here's what is, I'm doing is I'm pulling up yeah. uh possibly. Let's see if I can share to share the screen. And so people can kind yeah. of see what it looks like. And so yeah. mm-hmm. Watercress Wang, Andrea Chin, Jason. Yes, by, yes, but written by Andrea Wang, illustrated by Jason Chin. OK, and then. Um, oh, boo, whatever. You get it. It's got <laughs> it's got a picture of a little girl. And um, she seems to be walking in. I'm going to stop sharing because now we're all getting epilepsy. <laughs> and uh, so but it's it seems to be a, a little girl who who has uh, who's walking through some sort of fields. Yes. And you can already tell just from like the bit of the cover you saw, I would imagine it's much more muted colors. It's very naturalistic. There's no dragons or supervillains. There's a car. Um, there seems to be yeah. a, 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 an early like a like a 70s kind of sedan though a two-door what's happening this is a what kind so, of family owns a two-door and my dad my dad used to own a two-door it was very annoying we had to crawl into the back with a lot of kids anyway so go ahead <laughs> so I, I love that you said that because can i read you the first page yeah we are in the old pontiac 
The red paint faded by years of glinting Ohio sun, pelting rain and biting snow. So clearly she wants you to know, she wants to answer your question. What kind of car is this? It's a Pontiac, now you know. It's a Pontiac, now I know, yeah. They're in the old Pontiac and they're driving through clearly cornfields of, in Ohio. And then there's a farm in the back, which has a, a big flag on it. Guess what flag yes. it has? U.S. flag. Just in case anyone wanted to wonder where Ohio was. Uh, it's in the <laughs> United States, just in case you forgot. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. And so, but so, I mean, just to talk about the, that, that language, it's like, I think this is the difference between a book for like six-year-olds and eight-year-olds that you can use language like the red paint faded by years of glinting Ohio sun, pelting rain, and biting snow. Yeah. It's much that- more poetic and lyrical. Right. It kind of reminds me of that whole thing with manga, right? Japanese manga can be for tiny children all the way to porny. There's porny Magoo uh, manga where it's sexy times, but it's all done with paint. And uh, and so it could be all the, the whole level of it. And there's action and there's drama and there's romance and there's there's senior citizens fight crime. You know, it could be whatever it could be. And that's, I think, the same is true with picture books, I take it. I, absolutely, I know it's true well, maybe, with maybe, comic books. Well, two of the things you mentioned, maybe we would have put in picture books, but, but all the other stuff, definitely. Right. Um, but, uh, um, but yeah, because, you know, it's like any art form, I think, can be about any part of the human condition. That's yeah. what art does. Yeah. Um, and, it, and this and is so, gorgeous art. This is beautiful stuff. Like the, the next line seems to be the tops of the corn stalks make lines that zigzag across the horizon. Mom shouts, look, and a car comes to an abrupt jerking stop. Mom's eyes are as sharp as the tip of a dragon's claw. Dad's eyes grow wide. Watercrest, they exclaim. Two voices, heavy with memories. Exactly. And I will, this I will swap. I'll talk about the arts because you, you kindly read the text. So yeah. it's, it's a single illustration across the whole spread. It's this old battered old car parked on the side of the road. Um, and the colors are muted again. It's this very naturalistic thing. And I don't know, like older kids, I think will pick up on the fact that just on that first page, we're talking about an old car battered by the rain. So we know these are not rich people, that whatever is going to yeah. happen, this is not like they're not buying a mansion. It's, right. it's something having to do with like a, a, uh, people who are getting by. Yeah. Um, and, but here's it. I'm going to speculate because here's the thing. Yes. Watercress doesn't grow everywhere. And um, and if you have nostalgia for watercress, um, yeah, the little girl is Asian. And because there's not a lot of uh, mainstream Whitey Magoos in Ohio eating watercress in a 1960s Pontiac. Uh, so it has this, this sort of it makes it it tells so much more of the story, the background, all that art and all that beautiful. And they're just like. Oh, cool. Watercress. Because uh, I don't know if you you go, I will always order watercress at a Chinese restaurant. And mm-hmm. oftentimes you're like, it's not the right season. You've chosen poorly. And I was like, well, who memorizes when watercress comes out? They're like, we do. We memorize it. We're in a restaurant business. Anyway, so, uh, but the, uh, <laughs> I love, this is gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And I, I don't know, uh, if, how much time do we have to read like the- Yeah, read a little bit. We can go over okay. a little bit. Okay, so uh, from the depths of the trunk, they unearth a brown paper bag, rusty scissors. Uh, okay, so now here's the problem with trying to read on Kindle. Uh, my Kindle is not loading properly. Do you have the next bit of text? I think it's, and memories of China is the next. Uh, oh, interesting. It's uh, the next line. Well, what I have is I have sample pages from Amazon. So, see, yeah. um, but God knows they have, there are four images that they're pretty psyched about. And um, so, so memories of China. Oh, so, so, so and then happening? there's a cool, then there's a cool memory of China. I will show you this piece of art that just yes. showed up on the, which is essentially oh, that. Yeah. And you can see that it's muted. The art is muted uh, with a little bit of sort of a sepia to give you the yeah. impression that we are back in time. This is a flashback yes. because there's and a I think pagoda. This actually- yeah. I was saying, I think this art actually is watercolor. We're talking about watercolor versus digital. I think, I believe this artist actually like sat down and used actual like paintbrushes and watercolor. Right, right. And it is, uh, it is quite, quite beautiful. And um, yeah, I would say, yeah, I want this book. 
is, is yes. what I'm saying. It's uh, and they they don't seem to have a wait. Do they have a hard copy of it on? What what am I looking at? Amazon is this an actual book, picture book? March March thirtieth, twenty twenty one. Andrea Wang, author Jason Chin. Uh, hardcover twenty three dollars. I don't know if I want this book, but I want this book. <laughs> it's uh... <laughs> well, so 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 part of what you may be facing is that so the, the American Library Association just had its awards, and okay. this got the art got the Caldecott for best art. The text got a Newbery Honor for like one of the best texts of the years. That every you know every. It, deserves every honor and got every yeah. honor. Yeah, yeah, um, which, so which might like have jacked the price a to get. Yeah, exactly. And that's why I, that's why I could not get a physical copy here because everybody's like, wow, okay, I got to get this. Um, yeah. But it, it is amazing. And it's so nuanced and nostalgic and rich. And so I think it's really important that you have picture books that are just like, you know, in your face and fun and not at all subtle. But this one is very much one that like an older kid, an eight-year-old can really like right. study and think about. Yeah, there, there's so much you're right about. I mean, I, I get why you love picture books, because they they tell the story in so many different la- layers and so many different levels. I did um, many years ago, uh, a guy at a team called Six Point Express did animated one of my jokes, and it was a joke about L.A. pets, and it was how. Um, People pay a lot of money <laughs> to keep their pets alive after their pets, uh, you know, and they're just like, and it was, it was, I, some people think it is not sympathetic. I will say this, it was a funny bit. The animation on it brought it to a whole new level. Cause at one point my character throws away a cat. And uh, when I saw the storyboards on that, I was like, did you just have me throw away a cat? And he goes, it's too far, too far. Did it to, to go too far? And I was like, Oh no, it's hilarious. I'm just saying I threw away a cat. Uh, so <laughs> that might, it seems dark, <laughs> seems super dark. And, but he, this is the same team that got an Oscar for doing the animation for something called hair love. Um, It was a short, the short hair love. And um, so they did mine in like 2000, I think five, maybe 2006. I forget what year uh, LA pets came out. You can YouTube it. Rangers know about it. Um, I've always wanted that team to do it more. And they'd given me such a deal on the first animation. And they did three months of, of, storyboards and animation it was a team i didn't pay them anything like what they deserve they deserved 100 grand and um and so i was like would you do this next one they're like it'll be 100 grand and i was like (laughs) oh well let me let me keep thinking about it then but uh but it is it is worthwhile to talk about how great that is i mean and and i love what you have brought to the dork forest quite honestly because we never do get to talk about this is a beautiful dorkdom and uh, yeah, so people, we are at an hour, just so you know, and uh, people should know that they could find Jacob Sager Weinstein. You can, you can, t- you can tweet at him if you want to talk more about picture books and you can get that. his, yeah, wouldn't that be fun? It's Jacob SW at Jacob SW. You can ask him where's the best place to get Indian food in London. He might know. And, um, and then the two books that he has written, and there's a, a new one in the works, is Princess Unlimited and Lyric McCarrigan. And they look beautiful. You can watch uh, this. You can look things up. They're on YouTube because this is one of those episodes you might want to go check out the YouTube page. And I believe it's youtube.com slash the dork forest. Don't quote me. You have Google skills. I believe in you, Rangers. Uh, but thank you so much for doing the show, Jacob. Thank you so much for having me. It's been great. That is outstanding. And uh, Rangers, you know the rules out there. Take care of each other. My hat, my hat, my hat. They're dancing around my hat, (laughs) my hat, my hat, my hat. Well, what do you think of that? If it looks like a Mexican hat dance and it sounds like a Mexican hat dance, it's most likely a Mexican hat dance. So take off your hat and let's dance. Yay. Oh, my God. Why don't we just call that as the end of the show?